Hey y'all, I'm DJ and this is Modem Monday. And this month we're going to talk about the Haze Stack Smart Modem. Now you might be saying to yourself, uh, Hayes Stack. I know what a smart modem is, but I've never heard it called a Hayes Stack smart modem. Early in the days of the smart modem, uh, Hayes had this concept that they wanted to make cross-platform compatible peripherals that were external to the device, so that way they were more compatible over like serial RS-232, uh, and that they would sit on your desk and be able to stack on top of each other so they didn't take up a whole bunch of space on your desk. There weren't very many products that were actually made to be Hayes Stack, but as you can see in the picture up here, they have a picture of the Hayes Smart Modem and the Hayes Coronagraph together. Now, there were a couple of others that had come out, but uh, they were far less prolific, and at the time that this one was released, those were the only two that were on the market. By the mid-80s, whenever the Smart Modem 1200 came out, the Hayes Stack nomenclature sort of started to die off, even though the Coronagraph continued as a product until about 1989, I think it was. Now this specific smart modem isn't new in the box, but it is new enough in the box for an unboxing. So how about we take a closer look at, at the packaging itself and then we'll get this thing out and play with it. This was originally introduced in 1981 and was Hayes' first smart modem as we think of them today. When people talked about a modem being Hayes compatible, this is the exact modem that that all started with. Smart modems were not a new thing for Hayes when this was released. Hayes modems had always been smart, but not with a programmatically compatible control methodology, and each were made for specific bus slot computer types like the S100s and the Apple IIs. This product marked a change in all that, an external device that any system could use with a control methodology that was reproducible on any platform with microprocessor-based advanced automation internal to the modem. There were other smart modems, even before this, which were external, but their control languages were far less advanced and their capabilities limited, and their prices were astronomical for what they were. Just like it says here on the box, it could be completely autonomous with auto answering and dialing, and you could control it easily enough. If you have touchstone, it'll dial pretty quickly. Before this model, Hayes didn't have any modems with an audio monitor on them, so that was a pretty big selling point to be able to hear how the call is progressing. The fact that it has a microprocessor in it that can repeat operations and test the functions of the modem was a big plus. The marketing on this box is pretty fantastic compared to earlier Hayes items. It's well laid out, and it actually tries to sell you on buying it, because this thing was almost always the most expensive modem available throughout the entire product lifetime. Oh sure, there were some others that were more expensive, but a genuine Hayes modem was never a cheap purchase. Well, I suppose we better get this thing out of the box. So, first we're greeted by the manual, and this packaging became a staple design that Hayes used for years and years, pretty much up until the end of their run. And this one also has a brochure included for the Hayes stack concept which also shows the micromodems, even though they're not really part of the stack concept. In this brochure, we see only two items for the stack concept, the smart modem and the chronograph, but the front graphic shows them to be the same size in their silhouettes. But that's okay. This is remedied right inside on the second page. In the brochure, it describes how the Hayes stack is supposed to save you precious desk space, make life easier in general. It contains descriptions of the Hayes smart modem, and I think I should pause and emphasize this here. The name of this product is the Hayes smart modem, not smart modem 300. There was no other smart modem, so there was no speed designation in its name. The brochure goes on to describe the chronograph, the micromodem 2, and finally the micromodem 100. Pretty neat stuff. Pretty much all Hayes products were packaged like this from this time forward. A nice spiral bound manual that details everything about the modem's installation and operation is included. Now I think this one's funny because this one came out before bugs in the ROM could be resolved in production, so an errata sheet was added to assist users proactively if they encountered these bugs and how to work around them. Now what strikes me funny is that the sheet is titled Antidotes. As with all Hayes documentation, it's exceptionally well written, technically detailed, and includes very helpful illustrations and tables of information. The installation procedures flow effortlessly from start to finish, and even include checkout procedures to ensure everything is operating smoothly. Then, helpful info just abounds page after page after page, getting deeper and deeper into the details of advanced and automated operations. Inside, you get exactly what the side of the box said, the smart modem. Power pack, telephone cable, 
And of course, we already saw the manual. And that's it for about $300 in 1981. That's all you got. That's like $800 today. Hey, where's the home button on this $800 tablet? How do I make it join the Wi-Fi? Seriously, though, this thing was your Wi-Fi back then. Okay, so we have all the parts. We should definitely go ahead and get this set up. Here's a good place to set everything up. First, we need a period correct computer. So let's dig out some 1981 Apple II goodness. Now, this is all some cutting edge stuff we're going to put together here. So the Apple IIe didn't even come out until 1982. So this is the Apple II Plus and the Apple Super Serial Card from 1981. And of course we need storage. And so that's that. We can put the lid on this thing and add a monitor. Of course it's 1981, so it's gonna be a monitor three. And now we need to install the modem. Okay, that's that, and we're good to go. Next, we have to boot up the machine and get it online. For that, we're going to use the oldest copy of ASCII Express that I can find. This one's a little newer than our proposed 1981 date, but it is the oldest one on the archive, and incidentally, it's from 1982, and it does know what a smart modem is, and it handles it in an odd way by forcing the computer into thinking it's always connected so that you can manually control the modem. So let's boot up the software and get it configured. Okay, who knows exactly how this program is configured right now. So let's go through the install program and set it up correctly for this machine. This 2 Plus has a lowercase mod and a shift key mod. And uh, this version of ASCII Express supports that. So we'll answer yes to the lowercase questions here. And then we want to change the installed COM driver to the Super Serial card, which is installed in slot 2. Next, let's be sure that we have it forced to 40 column mode. Uh, I didn't install an 80 column card in here because, well, 40 column is easier to read on the video. And finally, we'll enable the shift key mod and we'll tell it that this is a Hey Smart modem. So they'll think that it has a perpetual carrier so we can control the modem. This version of AE didn't implement any control over the smart modem. So let's save this and let it relaunch into AE and that'll take us directly into terminal mode so that we can interact with the modem. And as is tradition, I'll call my BBS and post a message there in the modem talk message base talking about the setup we have here. But uh, we'll do that in time lapse so that it doesn't take too long. And next, let's call out to Dura Europos BBS, which is run by Skip. To do that, first I need to connect to the Annex so that I can tell Net to his BBS. We'll just poke around here a little bit, and if you haven't visited his board, you really should, especially if you have an Apple II with ProTerm. He has a lot of nice ProTerm special emulation support on his board, but also some decent ANSI support as well. Of course, this setup won't do either, so we're just stuck with plain text. And of course it wouldn't be Modem Monday if we weren't going to take this thing apart. So let's go ahead and get this thing disassembled and have a look inside. Okay, so here we have the modem itself. You can see here on the front of it how it says that it is the smart modem. It doesn't say 300 like I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is predating 
the 1200 baud modem, so there was only one smart modem. Let's go ahead and open this thing up, take a look at the inside, see how it worked. Uh, I'd like to give a little shout out to my friend Raymond Jett over at arcadecomponents.com. Uh, he gave me this cool little chip puller that he made out of a uh, screwdriver that uh, he had gotten several of these in bulk. It comes in really handy for doing things like popping the faceplate off of a Hey Smart modem. You know, this was designed to be used with, with a small screwdriver like this, but the fact that this thing is curved makes that so much easier to get the leverage in there that we need. So you can see here on the uh, front side of this, you got your dip switch bank here, and the dip switches were the way with this system that you would uh, store the default configuration that you wanted to have whenever the system first turned on. Uh, each one of these dip switches does things like setting auto answer or setting the state of DTR or setting uh, the state of carrier detect, etc., etc., whether or not you want to have it echo commands and all that kind of stuff. So in order to get this guy out of here, we have to remove these two screws, which I'll do very quickly. And so those are out. And then just push it out here. And here's our board. Uh, almost every single component on here has a 1982 date code on it. Um, however, you'll notice over here, it says Hayes, copyright 1981. Uh, one of the first things that you might notice on this thing is this big, huge purple and gold ceramic chip. Uh, you'll notice that it says that it's a Hayes product from 1982, but it also has the Zilog or Zilog, depending on your pronunciation, uh, logo on it. And that's because this is a Z8 CPU or microprocessor with the mask ROM built into it. So the program that that CPU uses is actually stored on that chip. This chip, even though it's got a Z8 in it, that Z8 can do nothing but be a smart modem controller. Pretty simple device, uh, but not a whole lot of traces. I mean, this was just a 300 baud modem, and uh, the only thing that was really spectacular about it was the fact that it was microprocessor controlled and therefore smart. Well, there we have it. That was the Hayes Stack Smart Modem, the first successful smart modem and the most successful smart modem ever produced. Uh, every manufacturer out there after this thing came out, they had a command set that they wanted to copy and that made them Hayes compatible so that anybody who wrote software to control a Hayes modem could just plug into a clone modem and it ought to work. So that pretty much wraps it up for Modem Monday this week. Uh, as always, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates. Click like on this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments whether you liked or disliked something in this video or how I could improve it. Obviously, I'm making these for you guys, my viewers, and uh, if there was something that you didn't like about it, hey, I need to know so that I can make that better so that you enjoy my videos more. Uh, please check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below the video. You know, it's this is not my full-time job, but it does take up a lot of my time to produce these. I don't expect I'm going to get rich on this, but who knows? Maybe I will. <laughs> Anyhow, until next time, I'll see you. Have a happy Moto Monday. Bye.